Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is anneal your metal. Um, I'm using a 12 inch annealing pan off from Amazon. What you see here in the middle that looks like kitty litter, what it actually is is vermiculite, okay? It'll suck up that heat and it'll reflect it right back onto your metal. So um, anyhow, I picked this one again. I picked it up off from Amazon. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a plumber's torch and I'm going to heat these up until they're red hot, okay? So there's my 24 gauge. This is my 16. <laughs> Obviously the 16 gauge will take a little extra time. Okay, so for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna be using an electric mill. I wanna caution you against something when it comes to using these plates in an electric mill. Eventually your plates are gonna bow, all right? It's not gonna lose the design but the plate itself is definitely gonna bow. There's a shelf on the front of these, and then there's another shelf mirroring it on the back so that you can slide everything through and it'll catch it on the back side, okay? With the electric mills, if these plates get too bowed, um, then what'll happen is this plate is gonna catch. You can actually use, if you have a hydraulic press, you can actually use a press with some urethane on the top of it to press these down a little bit flatter, okay? But if you're using a regular standard hand crank rolling mill, it's not gonna be an issue. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take my, uh, I'm gonna take a piece of cardstock and I'm gonna slide it, under, slide it underneath the plate. Now I do this to protect the bottom rollers. I understand you don't necessarily have to, um, but I'm paranoid. <laughs> I really, I really like my rolling mills. These are very expensive pieces of equipment and I'm not willing to take the chance. Then I'm going to line my, my metal up. This is 24 gauge. Okay. This is the thinner gauge. I'm going to line my metal up wherever I want to capture the pattern. Okay. So if there's a specific spot on here, I want to capture the pattern. I'm going to do that. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and open up my mill to accommodate all three of these pieces. And I'm going to crank it down as hard as I can. Okay. Well, not, not as hard as I can, but until it feels like good and really firm and tight. All right, and on top of the mill right here at the gauge, it's reading at 15, all right? There's a little dial and it's got a pointer on it. So then I'm gonna open it up, pull it back out, and I'm gonna close it back up to 15 where it was, okay? Sometimes if you open your mills up, you're gonna find that you pass that. So just keep an eye on your gauge when you open it, okay? Um, for the 24 gauge, for the thicker, for the thinner stuff, I'm going to close it down four ticks. I'm going to close it down to 19 where it reads 19 on the gauge and I'm going to slide it in. And really what I'm sliding it in for is to make sure that the metal doesn't grip. Okay. This is as tight as I can get it on this thin, thin gauge. If I go down to 20, it's going to grip the plate on the top roller and that's not what you want. So backing it off to 19 and I'm just fine. Okay. So my final step is to get a piece of two millimeter craft foam. Um, you can get this from Michael's. You can get this from Joann's, any craft store. And then I'm just going to lay it down on top. All right. Now my rolling mill itself is set to 30 RPM. So when I push the forward button, it's just going to automatically roll it forward and then watch your fingers. As it comes out the back shelf, you're going to see that you can only use your cardstock once if this is a route that you go. There's my plate. And then you peel off the craft foam again, one time use, and there you go. Okay. So this one right here again is a one-time use. Um, what you will find is that it's gonna leave a negative impression on the back. It's always going to do that. And this is a very, very thin piece of metal. So we'll move on to the thick metal next. Okay, so now for thicker metal, I'm gonna find my depth. Okay, 24 to 22 gauge. I just wanna make sure it's not gonna grip the plate, all right? But anything heavier than a 22 gauge, then I'm gonna do it just a hair differently, okay? I'm gonna open up the mill to accommodate the metal and the plate. I'm gonna crank it down and I'm gonna find that I'm not gonna be able to crank it down nearly as much. So about 27 is where I'm at right now in the gauge, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and back it off. This time, I know that if I crank it all the way down, crank it back down to 27. I know that if I crank it all the way down to where it's not gripping the plate, it's gonna get stuck, okay? To where it's, it's just barely not gripping the plate. It'll get stuck. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close it up about four ticks. Four is kind of my magic numbers on a Durston or on pretty much anything, all right? I'm gonna place my craft foam, line it up, place your craft foam over the top again at 30 RPMs. 
And if you have a hand crank, then you'll just hand crank it in. Watch your fingers. But you see how it's not even sliding the rest of the plate forward? And you know what? That's still gonna be fine. So when we peel it off, the thicker metal has less of a negative impression, but you're still capturing all that fine detail, okay? The detail still looks the same. But here's the thing, if you put this whole thing in at a thicker gauge to where it's just barely gripping the metal, it's gonna get stuck, you might break a gear, you know, you just gotta be super careful. And remember, four ticks, for especially for a Durston, is kind of the magic number, whether you're hand cranking it or not, okay? Okay, now that you have your metal all finished up, you can go ahead and do anything you want to it. Keep in mind that when you solder something that has these really, really deep recesses in it, you're only gonna get contact on the higher parts, okay? So if you're soldering a bezel or a tube on it, you're never gonna get contact completely all the way around. But a majority of the time, a bezel is, you're never gonna find, or very rarely will you ever find, a bezel that is structural. So it's gonna be just fine, okay? So as long as you get good contact going all the way around, um, you know, and on the high ridges, then you'll be all right. Okay. So from here on out, just make something super duper pretty. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Take care.